today's agenda is at first I just want to spend a few slides telling you what CAMEL is in case you don't know. But the focus of this webinar is very much about what's new in CAMEL CAMEL 3 and all the CAMEL sub projects we have today. And at the end, we have some insights into what's coming next in roadmaps and more material. And we end this webinar with Q&A. But let's first start with what is CAMEL? Well, CAMEL is an integration framework. Um, it's the Swiss army knife of integration. It's also one of the most active and developed products at the Passive Software Foundation. It's been around for 12 years. And it comes with a lot of functionality, so you can kind of picture the, it's more like a giant Swiss army knife. But what do you use CAMEL for? Well, you use CAMEL to integrate different systems. So you have many companies, so they have a lot of systems and they don't speak one language, so to speak. There's a lot of different networking protocols. There are a lot of different data structure and data formats, and you need to do data mapping and, and many other things. And how do you do that? Well, that's where a camera comes in, and you slot that in between, and camera allows you to integrate different systems really easily. Now, camel is a Java-based integration framework. It run, supports and runs on many of the very popular runtimes like Spring Boot, Quarkus, which we're going to talk about later today, Java Enterprise, Microprofile Specification, OSGI, Standalone, and whatever. It's also based on the idea of enterprise integration patterns, and it comes to a lot of components, which you can think of like connectors to connect to a lot of different systems. And in CAMEL, you define or decode how you integrate different systems using a DSL, which you can code in Java XML. If you've never seen CAMEL routes before, then you're going to see them in the next slide. Here's a very simple sample of a CAMEL route. So we are connecting two different systems. It's a straight one-to-one -one integration between a file system and DMS broker. So we just say from file and the director where to pick up the files and specify the queue name. And you could use that in the top corner is the Java code and in the bottom you can do that in XML. Okay, but this webinar is more about CAMEL 3 and what's new. Andrea, will you tell us more about CAMEL 3? Yeah, thanks Klaus. So let's talk about uh, Apache Camel 3 and what has been done during the effort uh, from the community about this, this release. So um, in, uh, in Camel 2, uh, Apache Camel was uh, a mono project. So you have everything in, uh, in Apache Camel and in Apache Camel 3, we built an ecosystem around Camel. So uh, the projects of Apache Camel 3 are the base one, which is uh, Apache Camel, the integration framework. Then we have Camel K, uh, which is the cloud native uh, application Camel version and is a lightweight serverless integration platform. You may read the K as Camel on Kubernetes or uh, Camel on Key Native. But we will see this later with the, in the next slide. Then we have Camel Quarkus, which contains the Camel extension for Quarkus. So the Quarkus support in the Apache Camel ecosystem and is an optimized version of Camel uh, using the GraalVM stuff. So this is another important part of the Apache Camel 3, Camel 3 release. And the latest project in the family, the newest one is Camel Kafka Connector, which use Kafka Connect API, so the Kafka Connect framework, combined with the functionality and feature of Apache Gamma. Let's focus on what's new on Apache Gamma 3 in the Camel 3 project, so in the core. This is the, the timeline of Camel 3. So we wanted to do a time, bo time box at release, and we want to do this in, in a year. So we switched to the master branch to Camel 3 in December to 2018, and we released the GA in December 2019. So in the in the correct date, in the middle we released multiple milestone and release candidate with different features, uh, with that I will show you in the coming slide. 
uh, what was the commentary goals in the beginning? So what we want to do is a cleanup of the technical depth that we had and tidying up the APIs. We wanted to modularize the Gamer Core and make the Gamer Core light, lightweight, introduce the, a complete reactive routing engine, and uh, have a Camel main for the standalone support of Apache Camel as a separated model. We introduced also Fluent Builder for endpoint configuration and component configuration, and we tried to make Camel 3 backwards compatible, compatible as possible with Camel 2. We introduced also Java 11 support, a new website, and uh, uh, the new projects of the ecosystem, so Camel K, Camel Quarkus, and Camel Kafka Connector. And also we um, move out from the main repo of Camel 3, the Spring Boot support. So we will, we will be able to release Camel Spring Boot as a separated release from the core. Okay, one uh, important stuff that has been done from Camel 3 is the new website. And um, this is something we are really proud of because the old, the old site was not aligned in terms of documentation and information. And uh, the effort around the website was also to being able to auto-update the documentation on each commit. So if we change something in a component, the documentation is uh, regenerated automatically. And uh, we are able to have the website live in minutes because we have a job that works on this stuff. Um, common tree platform uh, runtimes. So uh, Java 8 is supported and uh, sometimes in the future probably we will drop Java 8. Uh, Java 11 uh, is supported from the first version. GraalVM uh, support is um, there uh, through Camel Quartus subproject. The Spring Boot baseline version is Spring Boot 2 for Camel 3. We have uh, the standalone Camel main uh, uh, introducing in uh, Camel 3, the old uh, OCI support to Apache Gara, to Apache Gara. War and uh, uh, Java, Enterprise in Java Enterprise support and also the Eclipse micro profile specification support. So about the modularization of Camel Core. In Camel 2, um, the, all the core stuff was inside the single jar. To modularize this, we split the core classes and functionalities in multiple models. And in the end, we have uh, 34 components. 34 models for this. You probably are wondering why we underline Camel API and Camel support. Um, this is because API, uh, API, Camel API contains the public API for the developers, and the Camel support contains the building stuff to build custom components in Camel. So if you are a developer, probably you will use them more than the other. The other are internal part, uh, more or less. Uh, in Camel Core, in, in Camel 2, uh, all the components were inside the same jar. We moved out all these components in uh, single Camel, Camel Core components. And uh, uh, those are part of the 30, 34 models I was talking about in the last slide. Um, with Camel 3, you have two possible choices. You can use the Camel Core and bring in all the 34 dependency of the, of the Camel Core, so all the jars needed. Or you can use the Camel Core engine, which contains the basic feature and the, the basic uh, stuff needed for a jump start, jump, jump start in Apache Camel 3. It's up to you to choose. In Camel 3, we introduced the endpoint DSL, uh, which is type safe and is based on uh, Java Web Builder style. Um, 
in Kano 2, uh, when you specify an URI, you are providing a string. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, a string is prone to mistakes. So um, one of the problems we, we faced in Kano uh, 3 was being able to build the endpoint configuration through Java code. And this is what the endpoint DSL does. So the, you are still able to provide string as a point uh, where I, but you are also, uh, you have also the possibility to use the endpoint DSL as shown in the, in the, in the slide. We did the same for the component. And uh, so we introduced the component DSL, which again is type safe and based on the Java Fluent Builder style. Uh, for example, in um, in Camel, one of the components with much more options, both in on endpoint level and the component level, is Kafka. And uh, configuring everything uh, through the URI in the endpoint is really complex. So the component DSL and the endpoint DSL are here to help. One of the points we would like to develop in Camel 3 was the reactive part. And um, Camel 2 is much more uh, a semi-reactive uh, approach to this paradigm. And uh, in uh, Camel 3, we um, make all the EAP fully reactive. Also, we, we introduce a total non-blocking uh, approach in uh, in Camel 3, while in uh, Camel 2 we have uh, uh, a mixture of blogging and non-blocking. We have some feature related to reactive uh, one that we, we have to postpone, and uh, I listed in the slide, in particular the back pressure and the, the flowable, flowable API from Java 9, and uh, this will be part of the next release. In Camel 3, as I said, we move out the uh, Camel main, and uh, this is for supporting uh, a standalone approach. And uh, uh, the, this Camel main is used also in Camel K and Camel Park, as we will see them later. And you are, you can also have a unified configuration in this case for Camel Spring Group 2. And the idea is to have a uh, single application product is for the Camel main like we usually have in a Spring Boot application. We have for the Camel main uh, also tooling support for multiple IDE, so Eclipse, Eclipse Chair, VS Code and IDEA. In Camel 3 we support the Eclipse micro profile uh, specification and um, the top three part in the slide, so configuration, matrix, and out checks are already there. The other three, fault tolerance, reactive messaging, and open threading will be part of the next release and are in progress. Other important stuff introduced in Camel 3. Uh, JUnit 5 uh, support is one of uh, the new features that we introduced. And another, imp another important one is the lazy start produce. So the idea is to avoid Camel to fail on a startup if the, if the producer fails to start. In Camel 2, we used to have a different approach and uh, the fail path approach. And in this case, we changed this behavior. Okay, so Klaus. Uh, let's talk about the optimization that have been done uh, in the country. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah, certainly. This is also an area that I spent quite some time uh, in digging into and optimizing for Camel 3. So let's go over that. So one of the other great goals of Camel 3 was to make Camel faster and low on, has lower footprint. Uh, one of the ways we did was to reduce the number of classes that Camel needs. You see here, we have an example where in Camel 2 is more than 5,000 classes, and now we're below 4,000 in Camel 3. 
and we identified a few more points that we can improve for the future. So we are working on that for, for the next release as well. On top of that, we've done many small optimizations inside Common Core to make it uh, even smart, faster and smaller. Um, one of the big things we did was to uh, also avoid using Java reflection as much as possible. So in Camel 2, when Camel start up and configure itself, all the bug configuration endpoint and components and also type converters that happen at runtime are actually using reflection based on loose coupling. Now in Camel 3, we uh, have been able to source code generate configure classes for that. That means everything is now a static Java calls and there's no reflection going on. That allows Camel to actually be faster at startup and use less memory and also much faster at runtime because there's no reflection overhead. And on top of that, that also works much better in the native compiled world with GraalVM where you can't do reflection. Um, we also introduced the additional uh, lifecycle phase on Camel service. So you can have a build phase and an initialize phase. This allows to Camel to do some additional work on building. So when you build your products, then these products like Corpus can leverage that and do some build time optimizations that it allows Camel to do uh, even faster, small, smaller things. <coughs> Excuse me. Another thing we did was to make JMX uh, totally optimal. Uh, so, uh, for example, on the cloud environments, you typically don't use JMX, then uh, there's no need to have it uh, compressed at all on the cluster. Um, okay, next slide. Yeah. So in the last release, the latest release in Camel 3.1, we focused uh, very much on reducing unnecessary object allocations, and we, we're going to see the next slide, but also to reduce Camel the code execution path to avoid calling too much code, which was needed, reduce memory and other times, and to optimize critical code paths of Camel. I think the slide speaks for itself. So. This is a slide showing the uh, average object allocation per second is going on. That means a lot of the objects that are allocated on the heap that Camel uh, allocates during processing message. This is from an example where it processes 1,000 messages per second. And as, as you can see, something in the middle. Lower is actually better. So something went really wrong in Camel 3. So 3.0 was using way too much objects. And we were able to uh, optimize that uh, quite a lot. So we were able to get that you know, 50% faster than in Camel, the, the latest Camel 2 release. So what I'm saying is that if you're using Camel 3.0, you know, please update to 3.1 and you'll get a great Camel again. And this slide shows the unique Nevada calls that are Camel is performed by processing the entire message. So from the start to the end, how many different methods are actually being in use in Camel? And you can see in Camel 2, it's 139. And this are some more in Camel 3 or 0, but not too bad. But then we optimized to half that in, in Camel 3. And we identified a few more spots. So, you know, more will come there in the future as well. But all of that is really awesome. It is really making Camel smaller. And together with the modelization of Camel, we can make Camel really small and nimble for, for the cloud environment, for example. And speaking of the cloud, then we have the new product, Camel K. So what is that? Uh, so Camel K is a lightweight integration platform based on Camel, born on Kubernetes with serverless superpowers. Yeah, I repeat slides. I uh, really like that tagline. So with Camel K, you can run it on vanilla Kubernetes, but you can also run it, for example, on OpenShift. And you get the best power with Camel on a K-native power uh, cluster, which you can install on Kubernetes on all OpenShift. So What's the idea with Camel K and how do you do it? So the idea is Camel K is targeting the low code, no code movement, you know, for serverless and lightweight integration, where as a developer or maybe a, another, another person is doing some sort of integration, but you don't want to stand up an entire uh, Java product. You just want to focus on the integration and don't care about the run times and you just want to let it running in the cloud somewhere. So you want to focus just on the integration logic. And in Camel, uh, with Camel K, you can do that in a single file. And this is a Groovy file. So in this example, you're saying we 
if we receive messages from a telegram bot as a chat system, do some message transformation, sending that message to a Kafka topic, and then listing for the same topic and sending, uh, calling it to be service. So that's just a single file. Then you can say the camel, camel run and the name of the file. And then it runs in the cluster in, in the cloud. Okay, so what's the high level architect of camel K? So on one side, we have the developer environment. And then on the other side, the remote cloud is the cluster, the cloud. So Kubernetes allows to extend itself using something called custom resource definition. So what we've done with Camel K product is to create a number of custom resources for integration, Camel. But what happens is that inside the cluster is an operator, a Camel K operator that monitors these custom resource definitions and racks upon them. So the idea is that you can sit in your development environment, write your integration code using a command line tool, for example, to upload your integration into the cluster using a, as a custom resource definition. Then the operator racks and the figures what to do. So all the smarts and the intelligence are inside the operator. It figures out what kind of code integration you're using and building uh, uh, documents and whatnot if that's necessary and how to figure out how to run that as a running part. And it can do that really fast, sometimes in less than a second. So, and here's a slide presenting about that. So one of the great goals of CAMK was also to make it fast. Uh, to run workloads in the cloud really fast. Uh, one of the problems was that every time you do a code change or some sort of change, then because of the immutable uh, container Docker image, you had to rebuild entire new image and that takes the sand same time all over again, again and again. That's why the bars for red, yellow and green are the same, but in the blue one is CAMK and you can see on redeploy it's really fast. So, um, where can you find CamelK? Of course, you can find CamelK on the Camel website on GitHub, but there's also something called an operator hub. So it's a website where you can find operators that you can easily install inside your uh, Kubernetes cluster. And there are different operators for databases, Kafka, and many other things, but there's of course also one for Camel. And speaking of that, let's see CamelK in action. So we have a little video, uh, a demo of it. So in the top corner, we have the source code, a camera route from a timer to a lock, and then two terminals in the bottom. On the right-hand side, we have a uh, watch where we watch the parts, and the other uh, left-hand side are using the terminal. So let's go here. So I am uh, seeing the CAMK examples. If you download it from GitHub, on the examples, you can find examples. Uh, over on the terminal, I say Q get parts in bots just to watch the activity on the parts. So we can see the CAMK operator is running. I go back to the terminal, and now I um, want to start uh, camel integration. So with the camel command line, I can just show you the version. It's uh, RC1. And then I can say camel run, and the name of the file is the Java file, for example, sample Java, and then in dev mode, as that's dev, that means it will tail the log so I can see immediately what's going on. As you can see, the camel K is running now. It says, hello, camel K. And I could go up here in the source code and I can change the source code to say, by camel K, I save the file. And I'll pay attention to what happens. As you can see, there it redeploys camel K and all the uh, container file, you can see the part is uh, terminated and a new one is started up. So Kubernetes is starting a restarting or starting up a new uh, container, a new pod with your code changes. That's really fast. And if I do a, a code, coding error, uh, you can see you will get a compiler error in the terminal. And remember in the top, I'm just using a text editor subline. It's not a full blown Java editor. It's just a single file, even though it's Java. And I can also configure per, uh, input parameters. Now let's uh, make it run faster, for example, the timer. So it's every 12 milliseconds instead. And then it just goes like that. So that was a very quick demo of Camel K. Um, Camel K uh, warns itself in full entire web webinars, where we can also go more in depth with uh, KNASA and other things like that, the scaling and so on. So stay tuned and look out for more webinars coming from that, on that subject.
But we are moving on to another great uh, thing coming in Camel 3, which is Camel Quarkus. So Java has been around for 25 years, but it's known for a thing to be a bit slow, um, especially in the cloud native. It has a density problem. This is a huge problem with Java. Uh, so alternative uh, workloads like written in Go or Node or something like that, you can stack and compact a lot more Go applications than with a typical Java application. Even a modern traditional cloud native Java stack is one hundredth of megabytes, one hundredth of megabytes, one hundred fifty, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred megabytes. Even with the let's say latest Spring Boot and so on. So that's the real problem. Another problem is that Java is a bit slow to start up. It takes time to ward on. It takes time to load all the classes and everything it needs to do. The JVM is, you know, built for a different time where you start up a single process and keep it running for as long as it could. Whereas on the cloud, it's more the opposite. You know, you just want to write uh, microservice or functions as tiny as possible and only run them when you really need it. So you need a way to scale them up quickly and scale them down again, but also very importantly, scale to zero, which allows to scale down and don't uh, use resources when there's no need for it. And when there is demand for it, you know, some web users come to a shopping website or something like that, and then there's suddenly demand for a service, then you can quickly scale them up. So how can we do that with Java? And ta-da, this is where our corpus come in. This uh, tries to be a solution for that and other things. But if you go to the Quarkus website, they have a tagline. It says, it's a supersonic subatomic Java. Okay, what the hell is that? Well, it's actually a Kubernetes cloud native Java stack. You can run with native compile using DrawVM or we can also very importantly just run it optimized on an open JDK and it supports uh, the best Java libraries and standards. Um, for this webinar, we're just focusing on the small footprint it has. It has a really minimal footprint. So this is uh, from the website. They have a comparison between a traditional cloud native stack uh, this is the gray ones. Uh, so, for example, in memory, the REST service is 136 megabytes in memory. Just by using Quarkus uh, in JVM mode, by just adding Quarkus to your product and have its main plugin to do some smuts and things or not, you can cut the memory uses in half. And if you can native compile that, you can get it down to 12 megabytes. So, a lot of savings in memory. But also, very importantly, is that Quarkus can help to be really fast on the first response time. That's, that's part of the scaling. So you can boot up really quickly and then handle that traffic. The traffic comes in and then you can process that traffic and send back a response. So a REST service and, for example, with a CROT operation to insert data in the database, you know, Quarkus is, is much faster than, than alternatives. And this is really important for, for Quarkus or, or Java itself. So if you don't know about Quarkus, uh, I highly uh, praise this product. It's really one of the best things that's happening in a long time in, in Java ecosystem. Go and take a look at that product. And we have also a couple of uh, demos with Camel and Quarkus. Um, one of the slides here shows that if you can native compile a Camel with Quarkus, you can get it to start up really fast, 13 milliseconds. The binary size of the native compile is still a bit too big, I think, but the room is 68 megabytes, this example, and the memory uses is only 16 megabytes, and that's the resident set. That means the total uh, uses of memory, so it's heap and, and the, all the other things together. So that's the true message. But now let's go and see uh, some demos, and I would like to show you first my favorite camel is uh, the Lego camel. Uh, I'm, of course, from the land of Lego. So, in the first one, we are actually from the Camel Quarkus website on GitHub on the examples there, an example called Timer to Lock. This is a simple example, but it's a good one to start with. 
So what I've done is to take out that source code and open that in the editor. This is a visual code. And up here you can see the route is just a timer and a lock. And it time uh, triggers every once a second. And I have a terminal. I say maven compile focus colon dev. That means I compile the source and then I run a focus uh, maven plugin that runs in developer mode. That allows me to do debugging and other things, but more importantly, I can actually do code changes just like in kernel K you saw before. Now I say by world and it does a hot, uh, hot replacement immediately. Yes, we can see the constant update immediately in, in, in the log below. And I can also change uh, parameters and the timer, for example, uh, goes quicker and all these kind of things. So this is uh, really awesome. Also, another thing I wanted to show is that uh, Visual Code, we also have tooling support for Camel. As you can see, I can get tooling assistance, what options you can specify in the timer endpoint. Uh, for example, the period, I can see the documentation for that as well. Uh, the default value was 1000, I can change it to something else and, and save it and so on. So that's really nice to get uh, support out of the box from the tooling if you install the Camel uh, extension in Visual Code. And also you can get a list of all the camera components in the tool. You can see the Amazon components. Um, there's also gonna be Google components and many others coming on. As I said, there's about 300 or so. And you can get the list from the tool immediately here. Okay, so let's move on and see another example. So when you work with Quarkus, uh, a good idea to get started with Quagus is to go to the Quagus website and there's a button called Start Coding. And then you can, you know, jumpstart a project where you can specify group ID artifacts and, and choose in Maven or Gable. And let's build a camera example. Of course, all the, you see on the website, these are all the standard uh, Quagus extensions you can choose and you can choose uh, many other things than just camel. But I am building a cloud native stack so I'll have some health checks and I'm actually looking for the metrics. Uh, it seems I can't find it. So there's a search box, I can just type metrics and I can find, okay, small mile metrics. Okay. And now I wanna add some camel extensions to it. And it comes down in the integration section uh, in the camel core. And then we are gonna choose the micro profile health and metrics. So we get that out of the box as well. And I need, want to integrate with the HTTP server of Quarkus. So I'm looking for the platform HTTP. Uh, there it is. I'm choosing that one. What I can do now is just to click the blue button, generate your products, and then it will download the zip file for me with what I, I've done. And of course, I've already done that. So I've twitched into my editor and I loaded up the product here. What you get is a standard a hello. REST service from out of the box saying, hello, hello. And then I added a route, a camel route, a my route class that extends the route builder from camel. And then I added a CDI annotation that allows Quarkus and, and camel to detect this class and then also make, uh, include the camel route. Then I say platform from platform ACP, hello camel. And then I say camel runs on, and then I wanna get the host name. This I'm using a utility class for. So I'm switching to the terminal to allow to run this example. I already, of course, compiled it, so I can start in the single jar, camel Java, jar, and there's a runner, runner Java, that's runner jar. And if I run that one, it starts up the application in JVM mode in 1.3 seconds. That's quite fast, but that I got a HTTP REST server and with health checks and everything included in, in a JVM mode. And I can go to localhost 8080 and you get a front page from Quarkus. And yay, everything is working. I can say hello. I get a hello response back that was running the source code. And I can also call Camel. Hello, Camel. Camel runs on, and that's my computer. And also have health checks. So it's just that health. I can get the health checks. The status is up. And I can see that Camel is integrated with the uh, liveness checks and redness checks and everything. 
and I can get the metrics. And for example, you can slip them into Prometheus and Grafana and have visualization and everything. And I can see that their exchange the total, that means the number of camel messages processed, that's one, that's zero. And if I call it again with camel, slow camel, now the, the number should go from one to two. And now it's at two to zero. So you have you know, live messages and everything. And I have a little script um, uh, that should, I'm no wizard on, on the script, but I have a little script that can get the memory use from that application, uh, resident set. So the total memory uses, and it's 198 megabytes. That's quite a lot. It's a bit embarrassing. It shouldn't be that high on, on but you know, we haven't, you know, configured anything on the JVM. You know, you can set heap sizes and everything. It's just, you know, by default, it executes and one to have like four gigabytes and so on. So it can use a lot of memory. Now I pre-compile the native one and it starts up in 20 milliseconds. And again, I can also get how much memory does the native one use? 20 megabytes. So of course, much less. And I can get the same uh, from the native one, call checks and so on, call camel and so on. So everything is, is good there. So what I'm gonna do as well is to run many. So what I'm gonna do now is to run 100 of these camel applications, the native ones, from port 80,000 to 8,100. So now I start the script, they're all running now. If I get the sum of all the memory they're using, they use 1.8 gigabyte of memory. So about 18 megabytes per instance. And I can pick a number, um, AD, let's choose 44, hello, camel, and of course it runs, and I can choose another number, port number, 96, and I get a response back. Now I can kill everyone, process kill, okay, everyone is dead, the website is done, I can start them again, and I go and I refresh the browser and I get a immediate response. So fast it is, that's amazing. Okay, um, but go and check out Camel Quarkus and Quarkus itself, that's really an, a great thing. So, and oh yeah, what's up with this Kafka thing? Thanks, Klaus. So let's talk about the younger and latest projects in the Camel ecosystem, which is Camel Kafka Magneto. So as an introduction part, let's talk about Apache Kafka. Uh, what is Kafka? Basically, it's a distributed streaming platform and uh, also a PubSub uh, messaging broker. Much more is uh, an ecosystem like Apache Camel. It's composed of multiple components like uh, Visual Maker, the Kafka Connect API, Producer API, Consumer API, and so on. So, and also uh, it has a lot of third party integrations. One of the components of Apache Kafka is Kafka Connect. What is exactly Kafka Connect? It's a framework that helps to integrate Kafka with other systems and external systems, like for example, database or uh, messaging platform, messaging broker and so on. And in, through the Kafka content, you are able to ingest data in uh, Kafka and get data from, from Kafka. So a user can define a source, and sync on, a source or sync connector to sync data in and out uh, Kafka broker. These connectors are pluggable, so you can use them. Uh, you you can use one of the many connectors available from multiple marketplace, or you can write your own Kafka connector. So the Kafka Connect framework is distributed and uh, scalable by default. It has an automatic cost management and uh, also it supports simple transformation and uh, streaming batch integration. What are the key concepts in, uh, in the Kafka Connect? The connector is, uh, the, um, is the source and sync created through the Kafka Connect API. The sync connector and source connector are responsible for setting up the connector at the partitioning of the work. And to do this, 
the sync and source connector will create a sync task and source task which are that are responsible for the actual work so they will handle the the real work also in uh, kafka uh, in general and also in kafka connect there is the concept of key value converter a converter is just a class that is able to convert the key or value of a Kafka message from a format to another. And this is important when you are ingesting data from Camel to Kafka or in general from an external system to Kafka. And also there is the concept of transformer. The transformer uh, is a class able to manipulate a message coming to or coming from Kafka. Kafka Connect framework uh, can work in standalone mode and you will have in this case only a single Connect worker and the configuration and the offset will be stored locally. On otherwise, it, could run, it, it can run also in distributed mode and in this case you will have multiple Connect workers. These workers will share the work and uh, the configuration and the offset will be stored in, uh, in Kafka. In this case, you will have also the, the concept of uh, leading. So one of the worker, one of the worker will be leader, and you will have also the balancing of the task between the workers. But what is Camel Kafka connector in the end? Is a big Kafka connector built on built on top on top of Apache Camel. So the idea is that using what we already have in Camel, uh, we should be, we could be able to build uh, a connector for each component. So you will get um, uh, 300, uh, 300 connectors for free, more or less. This idea has been started as an internal tool for concept in Red Hat, and uh, it is now as a project of Apache Camel. It was donated by Red Hat in December uh, 2019. And the idea, the idea, as I said, is to reuse in a simple way Apache Camel uh, as Kafka Sync and source connectors. This slide is about the available connectors. In, in reality, this is much more a slide showing the connector that has been, have been extensively tested, both with integration testing and with unit testing. Um, we are confident that also other connectors uh, are uh, already working and we are working on uh, trying to make the integration testing systematic. It is something that is part of the roadmap that we we'll see in the coming slide. But let's see how Camel Kafka Connector works. Uh, I will show you a demo of uh, Camel Kafka Connector from AWS S3 uh, to JMX in this case. So we will use the S3 source connector through the Camel AWS S3 connector of component of Camel 3 and the JMX sync connector from the Camel S JMS to component from Camel 3. The idea, the idea is to load the file in an S3 bucket and uh, send the file content into a JMS queue using in the middle Kafka and uh, using the source connector and sync connector uh, uh, related to the components involved in this day. So let's see. Okay, uh, this is again the GitHub project with the Camel Kafka Connector demo. This is what you need. Um, I already have Kafka running and uh, uh, in in uh, in my project and uh, in in my machine. So I have everything there. I also uh, run the Artemis Broker already. Here you may see the console, and we will point my queue queue. And also, I have the S3 bucket already there, so we will be able to load the the, bu the file in the bucket. 
Let's see the properties of the SUS connector. We have the class for the SUS connector, the converter that we use, we use for the key, and the components option. On the other side, we, we can see the, the, what we have to do with the, with the option for the JMS SYNC connector. So we have the name for the connector, the topic pointed, uh, other in, uh, information about connection factory and the, the ORI of the kind endpoint. Okay, now I switch into the product branch with the real option. Okay, let's build the package with everything we need. So we will have everything to add to our class pack. We export to the class pack and we run the Kafka connect with the connect standalone ex executable, the connect standalone properties and the S3 source connector properties. We do the same for the JMS sync connector, so we have already everything in place. Okay. Both of the connector are running, so we have the consumer on the S3 side which is pulling the bucket. And on the other side, we have the JMS producer that is already run. Okay, what we want to send, we are we want to load the file with the load from Kamikaza Connector, and we are loading the, the stuff in the S3 bucket. So it's already there. In this case, we have already the file there, but the S3 component has the delete after read uh, option already set, so it will be deleted. On the other side, we should find the message in the JMS MyView queue. We have here the message with all the header and information coming from the from CAM and uh, from the JMS producer, obviously. And now we can browse the, the queue. We have only one message here. And as you may see, the body is the low from Khan Kafka connector. Okay, this is the this is the log from the source connector from RS3. As you may see, I, the offset has been committed. Okay, and this is for the JMS in connector. Okay, this is more or less how the JMS Kafka connector works. And uh, let's talk about the roadmap clause, right? Yes, thank you very much, Andrea. So let's take a look at the roadmap for the upcoming Camel 3.2 release. So. I have mentioned it before, we'll continue doing optimization inside the CAM core. We identified a few uh, places where we can even modelize CAM core more. So maybe we get more like 35 or 60, 36 modules instead of 34. There was one last thing to do with the reflection free component configuration. And we also want to uh, implement more Eclipse micro, micro profile specs. And we want to allow third-party components to also be able to generate endpoint and component DSLs so they can use that as well. For the Camel K roadmap, then it's a little bit behind the latest Camel release. So they are, we are working on uh, adding support for the latest Camel, uh, Camel 3.1. It will have, you know, of course, all the goodies from 3.1 with the lightweight and uh, reduced memory footprint. There's also a webhook component to allow better to scaling to zero. Uh, we also want uh, to have first class support for Quarkus as a runtime. And then uh, Camel K is closely following the uh, K-native um, approach or the specification. And they are not yet on 1.0, but they are closing in on that. So when K native goes 1.0, then, you know, we are uh, good to go and be able to also do a camel 1.0 release. There are some other things coming in, uh, better tooling support, uh, and we're also working on a 
on the solution for doing uh, testing. And the last thing I want to talk about for the roadmap before handing over to Andrea is the Camel Quarkus thing. Um, Camel Quarkus is really awesome as it is today, but we have still identified some places where we can uh, improve the setup. Um, there's also some places where we can do a bit more build time optimization, and but the bulk of the work will be to build more uh, extensions or migrate more of those 300 camel components. So far, we've done 65. Okay, Andre, what's the roadmap for Camel Kafka? Yeah, thanks, Rao. So the basic uh, uh, stuff we want to do is having a stable release, the first stable release, because actually we don't have the first release. So we want to release the 0 to 1 first version of Kafka connector with inside the connector auto generation feature. We are working on that. So being able to update to a different version of Camel and uh, getting all the new option and all the new stuff from the component to, to, to set. Uh, for free, so through a modern plugin. We are working on that and it's a big effort. And uh, the other main developer of uh, of the, this project that is Andrea Tarocchi is working on that with me. We want also to introduce the systematic integration testing I was talking in the first, uh, in the first slide. Plus general improvements and also much more evangelism around the Dana Kafka connector. So more blog posts, news articles, and uh, conferences too. It's one of the projects that you know, contributors may try to approach to help Camel and uh, improving the, the community and improving the ecosystem. Okay. Let's Thank talk you, about formative. Yes. Um, so Andrea and myself, we have prepared uh, a number of links where you can find more material for Camel. Of course, there's the Camel website itself from Camel Apache Org, but also all these family uh, products for Camel, you can find them on GitHub. And there's also a YouTube video of the Camel K video, which is similar to what I did. Um, and there's also introduction book to Camel K from one of the main authors of Camel K, Nicola. Uh, so I recommend take a look at that to give you kind of insight into his mind uh, about why creating Camel K and some other videos on, on Camel K and k -Nihu. And we also have some uh, material from Red Hat. Uh, you can see the commercial side from Enterprise Camel is Red Hat integration. And we also have uh, other middleware products. And we also have architecture for event-driven architectures. So go and take a look at those. And thank you very much for sticking around uh, for this webinar. Um, Andrea and myself, will, uh, um, thank you for tuning in. And if you are using Camel on, uh, on uh, GitHub, then we appreciate the star. And now Andrea and myself will take questions. So you know, you're welcome to type your questions in the Q&A chat panel. Thank you very much, Andreas. Thanks for joining and uh, see you online.